What what market was that in again, George? I want to say uh, North or South Carolina. Hi, Elizabeth. So, um, cool. Listen, this is, um, this calls for you, and I'm just looking here for, oh, it's Raleigh, Raleigh, North Carolina. That's right. Oh, yeah. We have a place in uh, Pinehurst. Claudia's mom lives down there. Oh, yeah? Um, yeah, we fly into Raleigh, a uh, nice little airport, and uh, gosh, great place to do real estate down there in the south. Great, wonderful uh, uh, lifestyle, quality of life. The properties are reasonably priced. Um, yeah. You're just a great, and if you're a golfer, it's that's where golfers go to die. You know, it's, it's golf heaven, man. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Claude, I think let's do this. While we're waiting, people to waiting for people to bring their questions to me and, uh, and uh, type in their comments. If you have any deals you want us to evaluate, uh, if you have, especially this would be really good. If you have anybody that maybe a seller that you've talked to or a buyer that you've talked to that's given you some objections and you don't know what to say or you feel like maybe you 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 messed that call up, let us know and we'll do some role playing with you in practice. One of the things I thought we would do, Claude, um, if you want, is talk about the different ways you can make money with lease options. I've taught this for years. You've taught it for years. I've learned a lot of it from you. Um, let's Maybe we can review that. I was just working on a mind map um, of this. And uh, let's review the different ways you can use lease options to make money in real estate. I think you've got a mind map there yourself. I love mind maps. They're my way of keeping, retaining information and writing new ideas. Um, and it doesn't have to be a fancy. I use uh, MindNode. You use MindMeister, I think. Yeah, Mind MindMeister. Yeah. And, or my, my sweater isn't hitting the uh, microphone. Too. No, you're perfect. You're, the audio and video are superb on Zoom. Yeah, I love nice. the, I love this application. Um, Ways to well, make money. First way, sandwich lease options, right? Easy. You, you stay in the middle. You need to have a little bit of equity. You need to have some cash flow. You can stay in the middle for whatever you negotiate. Three months, I mean, three years, five years, ten years. Um, yeah. Sandwich lease options are great. Uh, and, and I'm not going to go into explain what a lease option is because all of you should know. But a lease option, sandwich lease options, where you stay in the middle. You have a contract with the seller. That's the A to B. You're the B. You're the guy in the middle. Yeah. And then you have a contract with the tenant buyer. That's the B to C. And so you, for an example deal, let's say the property is worth 200000 You get it under a contract to buy it from the seller for one eighty. It doesn't need any work. Okay. You buy it. You have an option to buy it in three years for 180 and then you put a tenant buyer in the house and you sell it to them for 210 and maybe the mortgage payment is uh, 1300 a month so you that's what you pay the seller actually you pay the mortgage but that's your rent to the seller what did i say 1300 but mm -hmm. you can rent it out for 1600 yeah. a month so if the market will support it cash flow you make some money up front in the middle and then at the end you make a little bit of money up front from the option deposit money. The tenant buyer puts down five grand, ten grand. You make three hundred a month for thirty-six months. That's ten grand right there. Yeah. You make maybe thirty grand at the back end. You know that's if you don't do any, you know, rent credits or whatever. And you're looking at a forty, fifty thousand dollar deal if your one tenant buyer stays yeah. in the house. Go ahead, Club. Yeah, uh, no, you laid it out perfectly. And the beautiful thing about it is my mentor, Max, used to always say that tenants are smarter than investors. I said, what do you mean? I've gone to all the seminars and everything. He says, no, look at it this way, Claude. You're the guy who bought the property, fixed it up. You had to go to the bank and the lawyers and title, and you had to do all the marketing and everything else. He said, what did the tenant have to do? I said, well, just fill out an application and do first and last or whatever. And I said, who does the courts protect? The tenant. And who gets the use of the property or what we legally call possession? The tenant. And he says, if the tenant has all these privileges and rights and protection and, and um, leverage, leverage is the, why don't we become smart tenants? And I said, oh, my God. Yeah. There's like, it's one of those epiphanies, one of those revelation, mo one of those aha moments. 
Yeah, yeah. And I said, oh, my gosh, I've just been given the keys to the world. Um, so, you know, I was running out of money and stuff, and I, I yeah. could rent properties without the liability, without the taxes, without the repairs, and I had the same yep. control as though I was the owner of the property without having the title in my name. Control without ownership. ownership baby. I love it. Yeah. So the sandwich lease option, you stay in the middle. Yeah, you're the you're the you're the baloney in between the two slices of bread there. Is yes. A... <laughs> it's it's a great way. I mean, you could go out and get a mortgage to buy that house and put your credit at risk and uh, get a, in but the bank's are only going to lend you a certain number of um, a number of deals. Yeah. You could go out and get private money, but that's a pain in the butt, right? So why not buy these houses and or not buy them but control them? Through a lease option. And there's a couple things that you could do with that. The second way to make money with lease options or lease purchase is um, I call them wholesaling lease options. You can also call them lease option assignments. Claude, I think you call it just arbitrage. Is that right? Arbitrage is my word just because I like French. Um, it, it's the same thing. Yeah. It's yeah. it just means you're the arbitrage. You're controlling a commodity with the intent of a quick turnover and an upfront profit. Yep. So the deal is you find a seller who's got some motivation. Maybe there's not enough equity in the deal for you to be interested in it, not enough cash flow, but you get it under a contract to lease option it. And then you advertise that contract and you sell that contract to somebody else. And in this case, you sell that contract to a tenant buyer for an assignment fee of five grand or whatever. And that's a lease option assignment. Super simple. It's how I got started in this business back in 2009. I was doing three or four of those a month, working my full-time job. I was making more money part-time doing flipping lease options than I was in my full-time job. And I did that consistently for three months. And that's when I knew I could quit. That's when I left. And uh, it's been, it's been uh, never looked back ever since, right? We still have contracts and we still do those deals. And what's nice is you can do those arbitrage or wholesale deals. You can do them to other investors if you have the room, or you can do it to um, a retail, someone who just needs a house or yeah. something like that. And uh, they don't know how to do what we know. That's the power of knowledge. We know how to find, negotiate, and put into contracts these lease purchase deals. Yeah. People don't know how to do that. That's our power. Yeah. Yeah, that's... It's an amazing strategy, and I see that you're in San Diego right now. Is yes, right? I am. And you are you have two homes, one in Denver, one in San Diego. Right. You find, Claude, it's easier, and I know the answer to this, but do I, I, you find it's easier to negotiate lease purchase deals over the phone when, I mean, do you find it's easier to negotiate deals over the phone when they're lease purchases or when you're trying to buy the house at a big discount with cash? Do you see what I'm saying, the difference there? It's really, it's it's... I use the tech uh, to answer your question. It doesn't make a difference, okay? Really, to me, I use the technology as you do. We're on Zoom right now and and on Facebook Live, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I get you're on Periscope with the phone, and I'm think. on Periscope too. You know, yeah. uh, on this, and I kind of muscled my way into Joe's little uh, thing here. This is Joe's <laughs> show, ladies and gentlemen, not mine. Um, but he's a, he's such a gentleman. He let me stay, and the thing is. Um, I try to get people on video right away. Uh, one of the things I always do is when I get a phone number or someone calls me, I try to do a, yeah. a FaceTime call if they have an iPhone, or I try to get them onto Skype or Zoom or uh, Facebook Messenger, by the way, is now video. Yeah, yeah. And uh, when I get them on video, Joe, I find that I'm, instead of, you know, I used to get in my car and on airplanes and travel, and I don't do that anymore. Do you, how about for you? Has the video changed your business in lease purchasing? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't do as much of it as you do, though. Uh, I just typically will do it over the phone. But um, I can tell you when I used to do a lot of traditional wholesaling, you know, where I have to negotiate houses for 60, 70 cents on the dollar, you got to go look at the house to see, you know, to get an inspection on the, you know, to get an idea of how much it needs and repairs and stuff. Generally speaking, at least in my experience, when I was doing regular wholesaling, it was it's harder to do those deals virtually. It's harder to do those deals uh, remotely from Prague. Or like if you saw that one video, it's famous on YouTube. And just go to uh, YouTube and do a search for Claude Diamond, Joe McCall, cold call, and you'll see a video that we did there. 
Claude is in Winter Park and the <laughs> seller is in St. Louis. And all Claude had was a phone number, and he was able to negotiate a deal like that. So I find in my experience it's easier to do lease option deals because there's very little risk to the, the sellers, you know. Um, I, I just think it's it's a win-win for everybody. It's back. not adver- – one of the things I've always said in my books is lease purchase real estate is not adversarial. It's fresh. Right. It's, a, it's a niche. Most people have never heard of it or had a discussion on it before. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And that's, I, love, I love that. And I just go very positive to people, you know. Uh, is your home still available? Uh, suppose I wanted to buy your home but rent it first for a few years. Is that something we could discuss? Would you be comfortable with that, Mr. McCall? Yeah, yeah, that's good. And some people call wholesaling lease options or lease option assignments, sometimes they call them cooperative assignments mm-hmm. or cooperative lease options or teamwork mm-hmm. assignments or whatever because you're kind of cooperating with the seller a little bit, right? Yeah. Uh, the cooperative agreement to me is that there's some um, – there's some – Thing that the seller wants to control in the process and work with you in some way. One of the things that uh, we've done in cooperative agreements is right of first refusal, yeah. where, where they still want to sell it on their own or they want to use their realtor, and but they're still willing to work with us. And what we do is we just make an agreement. Hey, look, the first guy who gets the deal done, yeah. everybody else contract is void. Yeah, I don't like I don't like tying up the property because if I can't find a tenant buyer in sixty days. I don't want the seller to accuse me of tying up the property, taking it off the market to where they couldn't sell it on their own. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, uh, if it's a turd, <laughs> you, don't, you, can't, you can't shine a turd, no matter what people say. <laughs> you can't shine a turd. Um, <laughs> George Stevenson uh, said here in the chat that... Uh, George and Raleigh. Was, this uh, lease option deal, uh, the seller told him at the end of the five years he could do it again. So that's interesting. I've had sellers tell me, um, yeah, I mean, it's like when a seller asks or brings up an objection, like what if the tenant buyer doesn't home? I just say, listen, call me back and we'll do it again. Or we'll just extend it again. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Just do it some more. Yeah. Okay, so the third way to do lease options, Claude, I don't know what you call this, but I like to call it the double dip method. Okay. The double dip method. And this is how it works. You get a sandwich lease option, Okay. Where there's some equity, there's some cash flow. You put a tenant buyer in the home, you collect five to ten grand from the tenant buyer, and then you sell that as a package deal to another investor, who will pay you ten grand for the deal. Yeah. So if there is, if you're making three hundred bucks a month in cash flow, that is thirty six hundred dollars a year, right? That's thirty six hundred dollars a year in cash flow. That investor who gives you ten grand to replace you in that sandwich lease option, that they're making 36% cash on cash return in that first year. And you're giving them all the equity that you have. It's a fantastic deal. They don't have to use any of their own money to buy that house. So you package it as a sandwich lease option, and then you sell that package after the tenant buyer's in there. You collect five to 10 grand up front, and you sell that to an investor. You can make 15, 20 grand on that deal and be out of it, and now it's, it's given to somebody else. And, and what do you call that, Claude? I call it a hybrid. That's the hybrid, I, yeah. I call it a hybrid. It's the best of sandwich leasing and assignment or arbitrage, and you're putting them together. And here's the thing about all when I got started in real estate, I ran out of money real fast. Yeah. Uh, I did the traditional buy them, fix them up, uh, rent them, flip them, whatever. And money and credit were just at a premium. And um, people don't believe this when I tell them, but there was a time when interest rates were 15% and higher in this country. Okay. You you can't tell because of the cheap hair dye I I use here, but I've been in this a lot. And so uh, when I learned about renting to own, lease purchase, lease option, it allowed me to create more. it, It allowed me to be a player in real estate without the investment and the liability yeah. And, and the repairs and all the minu- and the lawyers and all the minutia that, that can be in this business. Yeah. Yeah. So again, you're, you're selling that package to another investor. You want to make sure the investor that you're selling that package to is a seasoned investor that knows what they're doing. You don't want to sell it to a rookie. Um, and yeah, so always do full disclosure on everything. I always disclose to the yeah. seller, to the buyer, to the tenant buyer, to the investor, everything. So it's all open uh, above board. Yeah. And, and what's so nice about it is it's so 
It can be so, it's so honest and upfront. Hey, Mr. Investor, I've got a property with a tenant in it already, a good tenant who pays on time because they're motivated, they want to buy it, and they do the maintenance on the property. We have a contract. Everything is set up for you. Would you like to step into my shoes for a reasonable amount of, a reasonable fee? Yep. Boom. It's all there. I'm putting it in a nice little bow under the Christmas tree for them. Yep. Somebody asks here, um, can you clarify the difference between a wholesaling lease option and the hybrid you just mentioned? Yeah, so real simple, with a wholesaling lease option or a assignment, I'm selling that contract to the tenant buyer who's living in the house. On the hybrid, we're selling the contract to an investor who's going to take my shoes and take my place and stay in the middle. That's the big difference. Yeah. All right, so that was three ways, right? A fourth way, Claude, I know this is one of your favorites. Oh, yeah. Lease purchase consulting. Yeah. You could be a coach. You could be your own coach and give advice to a seller or uh, to an investor on how to do lease options themselves. Because you're going to, when you're talking to sellers, you're going to find some that say, you know what, Um, I don't want to sell it. I don't want to do a lease purchase or I don't want you to do it, right? Or they maybe want too much of the money. You can you may say, well, listen, I'm, if I do this, I'm going to keep the uh, option deposit as my assignment fee or I'm going to whatever. And they may say, well, I want some of that money or I want to make at least 10 grand on this. Or whatever." You may say, well, uh, maybe let's do a role play on this, Claude. How about that? Oh, not a role play. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> you're, I know you're horrible at role, role, role plays. <laughs> but let's do this, Claude. You be the investor. I'm the seller. Okay. And, uh, and so... Uh, you, I, I responded to your email or your text, and I'm open to doing a lease option, okay. and so we're on the phone. Okay, but uh, for some reason, there's a constraint. You're too far away. The numbers are wrong. It's not my kind of deal or property, right? Yeah, and I'll, and I'll do that on the role play here. I'll tell you how Okay, much you'll say, Claude, why don't I do this on my own or something like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Joe, it sounds like um, you're on the right track. I'm, I'm really glad we're talking today. Thank you for reaching out to me. Um, yeah. What would you like to see happen? Why are we talking today, Joe? Great question <laughs> off role play. <laughs> why don't people ask that question more often? I don't know. All right, so back to role play. Puts all the pressure uh, on you now. To, yes. you, you do more talking than me, which is very difficult. I, I, I just started reading Never Split the Difference. Have yes. you heard of that book yet? Yes, I have. It's a fantastic book. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, uh, well, I'm, I'm interested in the lease option maybe, but, um, yeah, I, I want at least a, uh, a $5,000 option deposit. Sounds reasonable. Why? Um, what, what stopped you from getting that? Um. Well, I, I don't know. I'm just trying to, I'm just looking at all my options right now. Just go ahead and uh, you probably have the contracts already. You have a marketing plan, right? Uh, and you you uh, know how long you want to do it and what you want to charge. You probably have all that information, don't you, Joe? Well, no. No, I mean, um, can I, maybe can I buy them from you? I'll give you a couple hundred bucks. Or can I take you out to coffee and just pick your brain and... <sighs> Maybe you can How show nice. me. That is so nice of you to. That's so nice of you to invite me like that. Trouble is, I'm in San Diego and you're in St. Louis right now, and the oh, the yeah. jet's being washed. Um, <laughs> let, uh, um, let me yeah. let me ask you. You really bring up a good point here, Joe. And what I like to do is help people. Suppose there was a way I could advise you or consult with you, you know, combined with a package, or um, you know, so that you could go and do this deal yourself and keep all the money. That doesn't make any sense, does it? Yeah, maybe. How, how does that work? Well, a good question. Thanks for bringing that up. Basically, what you and I are doing right now is we, uh, I ask you more questions. We find out what you want out of that property, what you'd like to see happen. We set up a little marketing plan. I send you some uh, contracts and information to get it started. And I'm available for questions or texting or anything you need so that you go to the McCall National Bank. That isn't is that um it's, and it's okay to say no to me are are we on the same page is that something worth paying x amount of dollars for well that sounds great i'll pay you after i find a tenant buyer and the trouble you know I, I appreciate that joe thank you for offering that the trouble is i'm more like a bus than a taxi you pay when you get on the ride oh well how much do i have to pay up front a lot oh a lot let me ask you this joe 
<laughs> I do say that, by the way. <laughs> no, no. Joe, let me I ask you, too. how much I is, that. how much is, I, I want to keep them off balance. These are called pattern interrupts and a little bit of guts banter there. And then we go back in the role play and uh, Joe, how much is your lovely house worth? Is this your home, Joe, or an investment property? It's one of my rentals. It's worth about 200,000. 200,000. If a realtor, um, if a realtor listed your home in, uh, out there, what is it? Six, 7%. Yeah, 6%. So that would be twelve to $14,000, wouldn't it? A lot of money. Suppose I, yeah. help, suppose I help you so that we the phone rings off the hook and a lot of good people call you who want to give you money up front and give you over market rent and take care of the maintenance up there. If we could put that all together, would it be worth paying me um, $5,000, for instance? A lot less than the realtor. Um, yeah, sure. But, I mean, can I... Can I pay you out of the money I get from the tenant buyer after they move in? Um, usually, most people pay me up front. Is that a challenge for us right now? Because I'd love to work with you. Yeah, it kind of is. Money, it's a money's a money's tight for everybody in this business every now and then. But if money yeah. was, let me ask you this, Joe. If money wasn't an issue, let's just take the money out of this whole thing. You wouldn't want to work with. You wouldn't want to make a commitment for us to move forward and move this house for top price right now without a realtor, would you? Well, if money wasn't an option, yeah, I'd love to do this. It sounds good. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, Mike. Walmart hearing aid just fell out. What? If money wasn't an option, yeah, I would, I would want to work, want to work with you. Okay, time out. Just got a commitment. Yeah. I took Mike, the money. I took the money. It was a good uh, commitment, but how do you still get me from like? It's, it's money still an issue though, right? Oh yeah, but we took the money out. Okay. This is a little guts. This is a psychological trigger. This is a little move. We take the money out to get the commitment first. I've got okay. to get you emotionally involved where you're saying, whoa, I, maybe I can do this. And oh, my, we don't have to worry about the money. He took it out of it. Then now we go back in after we get the commitment. We're getting you up that yes ladder. Okay. And then we go back into it and say, Joe, you know, all we have to do back in the role play you know, um, I'd love to work with you, help you move your house, get the top dollar, save your real estate, save your 14000 real estate commission, get a good tenant in there who will pay you on time and so you and your family can go to Prague every three weeks. Um, and um, uh, suppose there was a way that I don't do this. So let me struggle a little here. Suppose there was a way I could finance my consultation fee with you. Uh, something now, something per month, and then the balance when we get somebody in there. That isn't something you'd be comfortable with, is it? To get this property moved in the next 30 days or less? I would be. I might be interested in that. Might? Financing it? Yeah. Tell me what's comfortable for you, Joe, and if it's reasonable, I'll accept it on the spot. Are you ready? Well, to... how, about I, how about I, I pay you uh, 1000 now and 1000 a month, um, and then the rest when the uh, tenant buyer moves in let me think about that for a second wow let me let me get my calculator busy busy work work struggle struggle i don't know joe uh let me ask you you're if if i was willing to do that you wouldn't want to make a commitment and we move forward right now right sure yeah i'd do it right now what yes i, I would do it right now boom i just made five thousand dollars love it I love it. Not so hard. No, so you can, and that's you kind of led on to a, a one of my other strategies for making money on lease options is you create notes, right? So let's let's rewind a little bit back to the consulting thing. That was a great role play. I'm glad you're recording this. Um, so you can uh, with consulting, you you know, if you have Claude's course, if you have my course, that's all you need, right? Um, and it's. You have the materials that we've given to you on how to do that, right? So you're just kind of like a coach to them, right? Yeah. Just a picture. Some people have a problem with it. They're like, well, I'm not licensed. You have to be licensed or whatnot. No, just consider it like someone went out and bought a $5,000 course or they bought a $5,000 coaching program or they went to Barnes & Noble and bought a book that cost $5,000 on how to do lease options. You're just teaching them how to do it. But it's more than just the information. It's you one-on-one. -on -one helping them not doing anything for them you're not filling that, out the paperwork for them mm -hmm. you're not um, doing the marketing for them you're just giving them the materials that they need which is worth a lot of money especially if they're an investor because they can take what they've learned from you and apply it to their other properties that they have right? yeah. 
Yeah, you said it beautifully. Um, exactly. Claude, you... what's the lease you would take for a consulting, uh, lease purchase consulting with a, in, with a seller uh, of one house, who owns one house? I, uh, my, and this is subjective. Every, you know, some people would be happy with $500. They'd be enamored if they were just getting started and someone paid them for their energy to help another human being in a, and they got $500 and they put in two, three, four, or five hours maybe at $100 an hour compensation. What's wrong with that? Uh, yeah. My viewpoint would be what would a, what would a traditional realtor make um, in this type of transaction? That's why I asked you that question. I did that for a very good reason, by the way. I wanted to get in your mind that 6 7% and how much it would be for the $200,000 house. And I, I repeated the number twelve to fourteen thousand dollars a couple times, so that five thousand dollars seems like a bargain. Yeah, yeah, very good. But you bring up a good point. You know, if you're just getting started doing this, charge five hundred bucks, charge a thousand bucks, build your confidence up, build your experience up. The key to this, though, is talk, 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 talk to sellers, talk to sellers, talk to sellers. Five a day, ask questions, ask questions. Right. Yeah. And uh, did you see how Claude kept on doing the, the, the suppose we did this or what if we did this? Is there any reason why we couldn't do business today? Or what if, you know, so he was selling the benefits of lease options or working with him as a consultant through questions, through a question. What if it's a give and a take? And uh, he was doing the old stroke and nurture. Very you know? good. <laughs> you picked up on that. You know my, sh you know my stuff. <laughs> Always complimenting. Great question. Struggling. Struggling like his, the long dramatic pauses. Acting you know? is an integral part of being a persuader. Um, how do we defeat our competition by getting people to like and trust us? We have to come. We have to create an atmosphere, an environment of that likability and trust. Not to be disingenuous or manipulative, but they don't know me. It might be the first phone call. How do I get them to say, "Gee, maybe this is a this is a good guy. This is a guy. Maybe this is the right person I've been waiting for." I want to yeah. I want to evoke those feelings. So I take on a role on the outside while I'm really while the brain and smoke is coming out on the from the inside, okay? Yeah. Hey Claude, let, let me ask you a question too when it comes to the legal contracts and stuff like sure. that. Sure. Um, you do you still tell the consulting client like listen, um, you should still have an attorney review these contracts, right? How do you talk about that? Um, I, I do that. I, I use a contract when I do consulting per se. Yeah. And in that contract, uh, there's something called, let me see if I have an, ex I might even have the legalese here for the, are they getting good value from this little uh, broadcast I think today? So. Yeah, yeah. I, I think if you guys are, if you're getting good value from this, um, and I'm just looking at my video camera. And my we want hearts. Voice. We want the uh, thumbs up. <laughs> so yeah, if, you, if you're getting good value out of this, Comment in the Facebook group or in the Zoom uh, and say, yes, thank you. This is good. I have a copy of my consulting agreement. Just happen to have one handy. Yeah. Yeah. And a little, just a little legalese here. I do it in writing. I, I believe things yeah. should be done expressly, as we say. Yeah. Oh, somebody just wrote, Sean Osby said, both of you guys always provide good value. Thank you, Sean. It's very yeah. nice of you. Um, this consultation is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information and training in regard to the subject matter covered. It is provided with the understanding that the, uh, that we are not in the uh, we are not engaged in rendering legal, accounting, financial services, or advice. Um, they should understand. Uh, they should uh, seek uh, legal. And I have something here: different laws in different states. And they should seek legal advice if they deem it necessary. Good. Uh, um, this is this is a pretty boilerplate kind of thing. I think it's smart. Uh, you know, it's one of the things you use to protect yourself. And you shouldn't represent yourself as an attorney or a real estate yeah. agent unless you have those de uh, licenses. Yeah. And one of the things I'd recommend is I would still encourage them to use a realtor if they wish. Sure. Right. I would never tell a seller, don't, you don't need a realtor. You don't worry about using a realtor. Don't worry about the contracts, you know, getting an attorney. So always encourage them, if you can, to um, use an attorney. 
use a realtor, use Dude, an accountant. I had you never some want to give advice. I, I had someone today say, Claude, I need to I want to take the contracts to an attorney. There's a good role play there, Joe, if you want to do a real fast mm -hmm. one. Hey, Claude, I, I'm interested in this lease purchase thing, but um, I want to have my attorney review the, the paperwork. You know, good for you, Joe. We haven't met you. We don't know each other that well. We're at arm's length here, and I think that I think that's really prudent of you to seek legal, authoritative legal advice. And is there any questions I can help you with and maybe save you uh, 500 or or $1,000 right now? Oh, I'm just... Uh... I'm, that's the thing. I don't know what questions to ask. That's a good you point. You know, and I, I, I endorse that, that you, you want to get a, another opinion on that. Um, if there's something I can help you with in my lay, uh, lay opinion, I'd be glad to do it. Uh, can you do me a favor? Because uh, time is of the essence in this transaction, Joe. Could you call up your attorney and get back to me at 430 today and let me know if we can get the contract signed today and move forward or if it's over? Could you do that for me, Joe? Yeah, sure. Maybe I can just give you his phone number and we can do a conference call together. Uh, if you want, but really the responsibility rests with you. That's I'm pretty busy here. Talk to your attorney. Um, see if they uh, agree with the agreement. If there is a question or something, you can get me on a three-way. But I'd like to see this concluded by 4.30 today. Is that all right? Yeah, that's good. See, you've got to always... I'm doing this... I'm teaching this more and more about the timeliness. Yes. Uh, deadlines. You've got to give them deadlines to either... Poop or get off the pot, as they say. What would the amateur do on that legal question, by the way? That's a, what would the, uh, uh, the beginner, the amateur, who was a little uncertain or a little well, overpowered? They would do a couple things. They would say, maybe, no, you can't do that. Or they would say, yeah, sure, go ahead and just call me back whenever. Like, go ahead and think about it and call me back. But I love how you gave them the deadline. That's fine. Go ahead. You know, first you said, you know, are there, is there anything? Oh, I don't know if you saw that ladybug. <laughs> Uh, is there anything that I can help you with? Like, do you have any questions? Like, what are your concerns? Well, you validated it. First, you said, yeah, that's good. But, like, what are you, what questions do you have about it? Maybe I can help you and save you a lot of money. And then uh, usually, not usually, but sometimes the seller will use that attorney argument just as an excuse to get off the phone. And you want to give them permission to say no. You know, there's this, there's a saying, like, sell the no. It's okay, Mr. Seller, if you say no. And you force them to say no by giving them a deadline. I, like, you know, I, 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 I'm super busy. I've got a lot of money sitting on the side waiting to, I've got five deals I'm looking at. And uh, I need, I can only choose one. I mean, you don't, you don't want to lie, but you say you, you've got to give them that deadline that says, I need to make a decision, yes or no. And it's totally okay if you say no. But, you know, one of the things I like to say, Claude, is... Um, you know, listen, I, I don't want to try to talk you into anything. I don't go around chasing people. If this is for you, that's great. If not, totally fine to say no. But let's just cut to the chase now. Are you telling me that if your attorney doesn't review <laughs> this contract that we are done? You know, and, I, and then schedule a time to get back to them with a deadline. What does that say about you as an authority figure? Mm -hmm. Okay. One of the psychological triggers is... Um, authority and scarcity. Um, you can also say I've done this with other people if you have the experience. But as an authority, say, um, this is the way I work. I need to get paid up front. I'm a bus, not a taxi. I need a time frame. Uh, I think it's great. Stroke and nurture. Yes, it's great. You're going to see an attorney. I would do the same thing. I'm not going to be argumentative because then it sounds defensive. Yeah. Yeah. But I bring it always back. I want reciprocity, but this is what I need. I need an answer today, a contract today, money today, a commitment today, or I need to get out today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're, do you're not doing them any favors by giving them that much time to think about it. I mean, really, you're not, they have a pain, they have a problem. That seller needs your help, right? Yeah. And so if, if you're not the solution, that's totally fine. Give them whatever resources they need, you know, to help them solve their problem. But you're not helping them by um, giving them, not help, not, not not making them come to a decision. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I think you, it also makes it makes it all much more comfortable. I think when you act subservient or begging or childlike to the prospect, I think you lose respect and integrity. Can you imagine? I, sometimes I think about this, like uh, think of somebody really famous, Richard Branson. All right. And uh, you got Richard Branson on the phone and you're talking to him and you're and you, he, he's he, can you imagine, first of all, Richard Branson trying to sell himself to you? 
Like, yeah. He wouldn't say, well, let me tell you about our coaching program to see if you might be interested. He would say, like, well, tell me about you and why should I let you in? Yeah. Like, you know, why, why should I spend my time with you? Why, why should I want to help you? And uh, he, wouldn't, um, he wouldn't say, okay, well, you can go think about it for a few weeks and get back to me, and I'll still be here waiting for you to call me. No, he's going to be like, if you don't want this, this is fine. I'm not going to sell you into anything. This is what I have. Give me a yes or no now. Because I've got 5,000 other people waiting to talk to me that would die to have this. So are you in or you're out? Yeah. <laughs> you just des- like that, you right? just described Bernie Madoff, by the way. Yeah, that's exactly it, what he, he That's what he did uh, with a lot of people. $63 billion yeah. when it was said and done over 20 years. There's something, if we play the right role and we understand yeah. the behaviors of the people in the transaction, there's a transference that happens where the prospect... Comes, it starts doing the sell. The prospect actually becomes the salesperson, which is the best place in the world to be in a dialogue with somebody. Oh, I, when I'm talking to somebody who's interested in coaching, I get so excited when they start asking me questions like, Well, tell me about your qualifications and tell me why I should go into your coaching program and give me references. Oh like, I just, I love, yeah, I, I love that. break on that as quickly as possible. And I say, Oh, listen, I'm so sorry. That's not the way it works. And I chuckle and make a joke out of it. And I'll say something like, you know, really, I mean, like, it's totally cool if you're not interested in this, but that's not the way it works. This is me interviewing you, and why should I let you into my coaching program? Yeah. Tell me a little bit about you and your experience. You know what I say when someone says that to me, when they try to take the control and they're interviewing me? I said, maybe you shouldn't work with me. Maybe I'm not right for you. Exactly. Maybe I'm not the person. When you tell sellers that, it's incredibly powerful. Maybe this isn't, you pull away. Yeah. This isn't a good fit for you. Yeah. In fact, probably not. Are you, are you telling me we're done? I, we, I think we might be. Is there any reason for me to stay on the phone, Mr. McCall? I mean. Why are we in business? To make money today. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'm not here to bully or intimidate yeah. people. I just got, after a while, how many times. You were talking. We were talking about consulting. How many forty-minute conversations have we had with people where we didn't make a dime? I, well, I used to have a lot. M- me too. <laughs> I don't. I used to have a lot. We did too. You know. Same with sellers. How many? Not just consulting, right? But like sellers. Like how many times have you maybe even wasted a trip all the way out to the seller's house to go look at the home only to find out that? They want 200, you want to offer 100, you're so far apart. You should have had that discussion. You should have given them the permission to say no. You should have pulled it away while you were on the phone in the first five minutes. Yeah. The takeaway is very powerful. George Stevenson says that. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, so here's one more thing I'll say to that, Claude. Um, the, the harder you chase them, the faster they'll run. There's that saying, right? Like, if you feel like you're desperate or you're trying to um, mm-hmm. what you call premature presentation, you're, <laughs> you're chasing them, they're going to be like, whoa, this sounds too good to be true. What's the catch? This sounds like a scam or something. Exactly. Um, people want value. They want an authority figure. They want somebody who they can like and trust. Can you create that by the way you speak to them, by the words you use, by the nuances? And can you sound different than all your competition out there while you're a problem solver? And you, it, it, it makes this business so much fun when you're the doctor of real estate instead of the patient. You know, I was just thinking of something here, and I wrote this down just earlier today. They, um, related to what you were just saying, there's some truth to that, and I want to take it at a little different angle. Um, it's sometimes true that people buy from other people that they know, like, and trust. Mm-hmm. But they really will buy, they, the real reason why they're buying from you is because you have a solution to their problem, right? And so there's many times they've only known me for five minutes, but I have the solution to their problem that they can see the value of, right? So this phrase I wrote it down, money flows to offers that per, of perceived value. If you're giving something of really high value to a seller, to a potential client, um, you know, it's important that they know, like, and trust you, but what's more important is you have a solution to their problem, right? Yeah, exactly. You want to, um, 
the thing is, what is the problem? You, you know, I might even go in a, like I'm an anti-salesperson. Oh, why don't you do this yourself? Or what did your realtor say? And uh, when you spoke to the buyer, the seller, uh, uh, what's the um, what's the biggest challenge you have in buying this, selling this property? Why are we talking today? And what I want them to do is reveal to me their pain, their need, their greed. Uh, people are looking for pain, uh, the, the removal of pain or the attraction of pleasure. Yep. And, can and I we... love the question you asked earlier, what's your situation? You didn't ask me about the house. You're like, what's your situation? Yeah. I don't care about the house. Yeah. <laughs> How many times have we been stuck in a conversation where it goes on for 15, 20 minutes? Oh, it has three bedrooms and four bathrooms. And, oh, we've got a new electronic toilet seat and... You know, and, and do you really care about that stuff that much in the first phone call? It's more important to know their story. Like why do they need to sell this house than it is to know about the house? You've got to lead off to quit the, the conversation with, uh, hey, I got your, your your message here. You called me back or whatever. Tell me about your what's your situation? Yeah. What can How can I help you? Right? I, I work with a lot of realtors, Joe. And I tell them, are you calling up expired listings? And they say, yeah, and we don't get anything from that. And I'll say, what you want to do is call up uh, expired listings and say, you have a problem. Maybe I can help you fix it today. And what do you mean? Oh, well, my problem is, and then they start spouting off. And you're in a dialogue now all of a sudden, instead of doing the, the canned features and benefits speech. Yeah, yeah, you got to stay yeah. away from that. Why are you selling such a beautiful home, Joe? It's, oh, you've been there 15 years. Why don't you keep it another 15? I, I was surprised. Well, why haven't that... you sold it yet? That sounds like a great price. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. They must be waiting in line to buy this house, right? You must have had, like, it's vacant. Oh, so I'm sure you've got, like, six months of payments and reserves, right? Yeah. I had a friend that <laughs> happened to if you are talking to people and you are laughing like we're doing today, just having fun and, and role playing, if, if this this is what it kind of sounds like, though, um, you're supposed to have fun in this business on the way to the bank. It, and, and I think a lot of times it becomes so stressful. Um, there's so many um, phone calls that are uncomfortable for people that they don't want to do the one thing that can make them a deal today, and that's speaking to enough people. And that, that's the that's where we need the most practice. That's where I needed help. Well, it, it certainly helps to to practice this stuff, and uh, we want to encourage you guys. Like the only way to practice, well, you can get a coach and mentor, but like the best way to practice is on the phone, actually, with sellers. You know, and you're going to screw it up, you're going to mess it up, but that's okay if you're talking with five sellers a day, and you got that little timer that Claude has, right? You can talk to five sellers a day. That's that's five times five is 25 minutes. What is that? That is the, um, that's the uh, new from uh, my, one of my clients, Ryan Nichols, sent me this. It's a one minute, a three minute, and a five minute timer. Uh, <laughs> I, right. No, I'm and I'm not doing any honeymoon jokes with a one minute timer. <laughs> so, uh, uh, what was yeah, so talk to five sellers a day and just practice, practice, practice. You'll get better at this. Um, cool. All right, so we were talking about different ways to make money on lease options. We only got a five more minutes, and I want to get off here. Um, we talked about sandwich lease options, lease option assignments, um, lease purchase consulting. You could do lease purchases as a realtor, right? Like if you are a licensed agent, you can make sometimes even more as a realtor with regular listing agreements. Mm -hmm. 3% up front, 3% at the back end. Uh, you can offer a service that very few realtors even know anything about. There's a huge demand for it. Um, and I have friends right now that are realtors that are doing this, and they're crushing it. They're making more money than 90% of the realtors in their market because, and this is what they do, they focus on finding the buyers first. They go out and do marketing to find the buyers first, and then they go and find a home for them. Yeah. While everybody is chasing the seller listings, these realtors are chasing the buyers, that have marginal credit, they're just six to 12 months away from getting a mortgage, they've got good down payment, and they negotiate with them. I know a guy, Claude, right now, he's a realtor, and he charges, I think, a $250 or $500 consulting fee up front. You had, him on, your show. You had him on your show a yes. couple months ago. R.P. Murphy. Yeah, he was great. There, 
there was a period of time, he's not doing as much now. Um, I'll tell you what he's doing in a minute. But there was a period of time when he's making over ten grand a month just in that upfront yeah. are you serious deposit consulting fee. Ten grand a month just from that. Um, now yeah. what he's doing, he's doing a lot of, there's a company called Home Partners of America that will go out and you, they will, it's a big hedge fund. I think it's backed by Blackstone. But they will go out and they will buy properties for tenant buyers and lease it back to them. And realtors are getting paid by finding those buyers. So you can make money as a realtor doing lease options with traditional listing agreements. Um, Makes it easier to sell too, doesn't it? When you call, when you call up a seller and you say, "Hey, I got John and Mary here with twenty thousand dollars, and they want to buy your home at reasonable market. If we, if you can be flexible a little, and we could do a lease purchase." That's a great point because you can't say that as an investor, right? Because that's brokering. Mm -hmm. You know, you need a license to do it. But what Claude just said, you can do as a realtor. Like, hey, Mr. Seller, I've got some buyers right now for you. In fact, I got more buyers than I got houses. And these buyers that I have will be perfect for you. They got money. They blah blah blah. Without, you know, what I'm saying like you can use the realtor language. Um, I got three more, Claude. Um, we talked about the double dip, uh, the standalone option. It's just a regular option agreement, right? You give there's equity in the deal. Um, maybe you don't have the money to buy it yourself, or you don't want to go out and get hard money. You just want to wholesale it. Like if there's equity, you can get it under an option, and uh, with the right of first refusal or a flex option, you know, and then you can sell that option to another investor for five, ten grand. Just yeah. sell the option. Pure option. You talk about creating notes. Uh, you, that's one of the things, Claude. You're so good at. You talk about like. Uh, uh, why go out and try to find notes, right? Why not create them? And with a tenant buyer, if you're trying to get ten grand down on a home, I have one client. His name is uh, Bob from Portland area. Uh, he put a he got a great looking house, put a sign in the yard that said, uh, uh, "Rent to own, three percent moves you in." Phone number. So he was actually advertising three percent moves you in, and he found somebody that uh, gave him I think it was ten grand or something like that. Uh, just like that, but let's say Claude, they don't have the ten grand that you want. They only have seven. You can, how, how, normally, most people just either throw that away or just take the seven. But you can create a note for the difference, right? Yeah, Joe, we're only three thousand apart from getting you and your lovely family into this home. Um, let me ask you this before I go. I don't always do this, but um, suppose we're only three thousand apart. Suppose there was a way we could finance the other three thousand dollars to spread it out over on top of the mortgage, on top of the monthly rental payment. Um, that wouldn't, that isn't something you'd be comfortable with, is it? Yeah, I, I might be able to do that. I'm, what would be? What could you pay over the mortgage, over the rental agreement, so that we could um, compensate for the other three thousand? If I could do that, would you? What would what would work for you? So I can maybe pay a hundred extra dollars. A hundred, okay. I let me get. Let me. It's close, but if I was willing to do that, if I could put that together, how? Um, what would you say to me next? Okay. What? Okay. Okay. Is that yes? Yes. That's oh, yes. thank you. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> it, that it's that easy. And now I have a note. I have the option money, I have the property rented, I'm making money on the rent, I have the little uh, extra $100 a month note, I can use that note for another deal as leverage or as equity, I can keep it as just cash flow for my, let it pay my Verizon bill, I wouldn't pay my Verizon bill by the way. <laughs> How much is our Verizon bill, Claudia? 262, 262 a month right oh, now. Oh, I pay 290 It's, you know, I got four phones on it, four iPhones on it. I have three and one <laughs> but I get like the huge data point. But it's the best money I could ever, it's the best overhead in the world because it makes how me much, more money. How much money has your phone made you in the last month? Maybe you don't have to tell me, Claude, but I can tell you it's made me a lot. Uh, my phone, it, it gave, my phone and this business gave me a lifestyle that um, uh, I am so humble and grateful by it. Every, Claudia and I talk all the time how we can go to bed and not worry about money. And what a blessing that is. That's very good. All right, I have one more way to make money with lease options and then we're done. Um, there's a great book called Buy Low, Rent Smart, Sell High. And I don't know if you remember this book. Um, it's called Buy Low, Rent Smart, oh, Sell High. Okay. About, it's written by some uh, a guy, 
forget his name. Um, he talks about how to find good deals that have, you know, 15, 20% equity, get bank financing on them, buy them, or maybe get a private partner with a private lender, and then sell them on a lease option, right? So you, you're buying them with financing, and then you're turning around and you're selling them as a lease option for the future. So yeah. it's a good book. Uh, just go to Amazon, look at it, uh, buy low, rent smart, sell high. Great little book. Yeah. Anything else you want to add to that? Um, uh, just basically, if you're doing the business right and you want to get to a point where you're paying your monthly bills and then you have a discretionary income to actually be a player now, an actual purchaser, an investor of properties, that you can, the, and you buy the right property in the right neighborhood with the equity that Joe talked about, and then you rent it out for a positive cash flow and let somebody else pay off the mortgage for you. Which yeah, is and, uh, pay it up, and you should always pay these off as quickly as you can. Double if you have a good month, by the way, throw that extra fifty hundred dollars on the mortgage. You screw up the algorithms and the bank and the amortization, and the banks hate you. And you pay off that thirty-year mortgage in fifteen years. Claudia and I have done that very often uh, on properties, and that's how you gain equity. And when you have equity, you have a great FICA score, you have cash flow, and you you sleep well at night. Um, you know, so you take those properties and you rent them out, or you can rent to own them out and make even over market rents and get the option money instead of a refundable deposit and a better quality tenant. Oh, who takes care of the maintenance and repairs themselves? Yeah. 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 Good, good. Well, thank you, Claude, for your time. Thank uh, you. I've gone over four minutes. Uh, guys, if you want more information about Claude, go to ClaudeDiamond.com. Uh, all the stuff we were talking about with sales today, uh, Claude has a course called Gut Sales. Phenomenal. Is, do you still sell that on eBay? It's on eBay. It's on my web page. It's, um, it's all over the place. Um, it's basically to do the things that you and I talked about um, is, is to be comfortable in your own skin and sales, just to be a yeah. good communicator. And you also have, do you still sell that course on consulting? Resources? I have a consulting package also that's on my web page. Thank you. Uh, and, um, you know, um, lease purchasing. We, we, we both have different viewpoints on lease purchasing, and it's still probably one of the s easiest and smartest uh, strategies out there in creative real estate. Yep, very good. All right, guys, thank you very much for your time and being here. We appreciate it. If you are a member of Wholesaling Lease Options, the recording of this call will be in the membership site. And um, cool. Thanks, guys. We will see you all later. Thanks, Clyde. Thank you, Joe. Bye-bye.